All right, thanks for watching, and let's solve the following integral that will have you on the floor. And in particular, let's solve for the integral from 0 to 1 of x times floor of 1 over x dx. And the important thing is the answer is not 1 because you cannot cancel out x and 1 over x like that. Instead, let's use a u substitution. So let u be 1 over x, then x is 1 over u, and then in particular dx is minus 1 over u squared du. And if x is 0 plus, then u is infinity. If x is 1, then u is 1. So that integral becomes the integral from infinity to 1 of 1 over u, floor of u, and then minus 1 over u squared u. Now, this integral is in the wrong order. But because of this minus sign, we can turn it into the right order, and then the integral then becomes the integral from 1 to infinity of uh, 1 over u cubed, and then floor of u d. Now, this is an improper integral, which I'd like to remind you is the limit of proper integrals. So let's limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to n of 1 over u cubed floor of u d. Now, strictly speaking, n can be any positive real number, but if the limit exists for every positive real number, then it also exists for integers. So we may assume actually that n is an integer here, which is useful because then we can split up this sum as a sum of integers. So that's really the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from k from 1 to n minus 1 of the integral from k to k plus 1 of 1 over u cubed floor of u d. So think the integral from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, etc. Now, why did we do that? Because on each of those intervals, the floor of u is just the first value here. So let me explain. For instance, on the interval 2, 3, the floor of u is just 2. Like, because floor of, let's say, 2.5 is 2. Yeah. Except maybe at 3, but this is just one value. It will not affect the integral. And in particular here, we got rid of the floor, and we just need to evaluate this thing here. And so we just need to evaluate this integral, which we can do by using an antiderivative. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from k from 1 to n minus 1. I believe this becomes uh, k u to the minus 2 over minus 2 from k to k plus 1. And that becomes the limit as n goes to infinity. This one half we can pull out, and then the sum from k from 1 to n minus 1 of minus k, and then 1 over k plus 1 squared minus 1 over k squared. Now, this is smaller than that, so this is a negative number. So with that negative, let's make it positive. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of one half sum from k from 1 to n minus 1 of k times 1 over k squared minus 1 over k plus 1 squared. And then you will see this is quite cute. 
there will be a telescopic trick going on. And for this, let's write down the first couple of terms in the sum. So here I just distributed the case, and in particular, we get this is the limit as n goes to infinity of one half of one over one squared minus one over two squared plus two over two squared minus two over three squared. And let's write down lots of terms so you see the pattern. Three over three squared minus three over four squared plus four over four squared minus four over five squared and then plus etc up to n minus one over n minus one squared and then minus uh, n minus one over n squared. Now, um, this one squared, we leave it as such. But the cool thing is, well, two over two squared minus one over two squared, it's one over two squared, three over three squared minus two over three squared, that is, let's do, sorry, one over three squared, then we get one over four squared, one over five squared, all the way to one over n minus one squared. And then this little term, which we'll see will not be very important. So this then becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of, again, so one half, one over one squared plus one over two squared plus dot 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 plus one over n minus one squared and then minus n minus one over n squared. And then what we end up getting, we can write this as a sum, is the limit as n goes to infinity of one half of the sum from k from one to n minus one of one over k squared minus n minus one over n squared. And we can distribute the limit to both of those things because they converge and then what we have is one half times the sum from k from one to infinity of one over k squared minus the limit of this as n goes to infinity which is zero because this has degree one this has degree two so in the end what we get is one half times the sums of n squared which is pi squared over six. And so is the integral in the end one? No, it is pi squared over 12. And that's all she wrote. All right, I hope you like this. If you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.